Ted Cruz says, universities are quote, trying really hard to raise a generation of pansies. I guess I kind of agree, but I, I, I don't think it's necessarily universities. I think the bigger issue is just that our culture has become so, I just, so comfortable that we, we, we're overbearing on our children. We, we don't let them make mistakes. They're not allowed to fail. And now they're terrified of everything. You know what I think helped me out in becoming a functioning adult and becoming successful was that my family opened a business when I was young. And I had to, when I was like 11 years old, I was taking buses and trains by myself. I, my, my family trusted that I would be safe. The city was safe enough, even though it was actually kind of dangerous in Chicago. But they thought I'd be okay. And they were right. I was. I was like 11 and I was taking trains to go to my family's business. And I was working with the family business. I think working in the family business helped me understand the world and become a bit more resilient. But now we have young people who are institutionalized their whole lives. From preschool up to college, they never experience the real world. And thus everything is terrifying. And what better example now uh, uh, than uh, the DSA, the Democratic Socialists? I was going to say, Ted Cruz blames the universities. And I think that they, they do deserve some fault. I'm not saying Ted Cruz is missing this point. I think he's focusing on universities. I agree. But let's now talk about just the, the cultural problem in general. Take a look at this video. I'm not going to play the video. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll play some clips of it, but I'm not going to play with the audio. Basically, this video has been going viral among mostly moderates, uh, among moderates, but mostly conservatives, showing the nightmarish reality that is snowflake culture. In this video, there is a man in the bottom right corner who is saying, please don't chatter because it's triggering to my anxiety and I have sensory overload. And it's like, wow, look, man, within reason, I'm willing to accommodate people. But this is nuts. Nobody claps. They do jazz hands. And boy, I'll tell you what, people who've never experienced the real world, this is what happens. How do you think these people are going to survive? I honestly don't know. Well, actually, I think they'll survive by demanding resources from those who do get their hands dirty and calloused. You know, you can tell a lot by, you can typically tell a lot by shaking somebody's hand. You meet someone, shake their hand, and you can feel that rough skin. That means they do work with their hands. That means they're, so it, it's, it doesn't mean shaking someone's hand and it's soft. It doesn't mean they don't do work. Of course, there are people who have served in the armed forces who aren't heavy doing, well, for the most part, aren't necessarily getting their hands all roughed up, but are experiencing, you know, trauma and, and, and you know, harsh realities. But there are a lot of people who have never done a hard day's work in their life who claim to advocate for working class people like these people, the Democratic Socialists of America, the epitome of wealth and privilege, overwhelmingly white Americans, one of the, the wealthiest, nation, uh, wealthiest nations on the planet, if not the wealthiest nation, complaining about the whispering in the room. And, the, and then someone else complains that the, that the guy said the word guys. Don't use gendered language. And I kid you not, it sounds like a South Park sketch. Like, a, like it's, it sounds like an episode of South Park where you have like heavy labored breathing. <gasps> Stop using gendered language. Ah! Like that's what South Park does. And I'm not trying to be mean to any individual. You can't actually see any individuals. People are going to get mad at me. But no, 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 listen. Growing up, I've experienced hardship, okay? My positions on policy are not based on emotion. They're based on cooperative solutions. I think, you know, in my opinion, there are very few people who hold, uh, who are in the political space that I am, who have a true understanding of the politics. I can have a reasonable disagreement with conservatives, but I can talk about facts ethics, reason, and I can empathize. What, what we see here, and I'll read the story from Ted Cruz, is a generation of young people who are like, it, you ever see Wall-E, okay? In, in the future, all the humans are floating around. They're, over, they're overweight. Their skeletons are, are crumbling and they're, and they're just on chairs and they're all just like massive and fat. And that's where we really are heading. These people are saying, I'm getting triggered by whispering. The original, like, triggering, it's a real thing. It was meant to, uh, it was typically used, at least as my understanding, refer to people who came back from war, and when a car backfired, they'd have a panic attack. That's triggering, because the car backfiring sounds like a grenade or explosion of some sort, and it makes them, like, ah. 
I've had some similar uh, jumpy reactions to like cars backfiring because I've been in conflict zones, not necessarily war zones, but urban conflict, police action with live gunfire. I've been shot at live gunfire. And so there have been a few times a car's backfired and it's like, woo, boom, adrenaline to a hundred. But it doesn't get, it doesn't put me in a, a debilitating state. Some people experience like panic attacks where they fall down, they can't breathe. That's triggering. People whispering, man. So let's do this. Let's see what Ted Cruz had to say about universities. Before we do, I am going to be, uh, look, go to irl.minds.com, irl.minds.com. We're putting on a live event at the end of this month. Sign up now. Uh, we're trying to do one big push before the event, August 31st. It's in the Philadelphia area. There's going to be a ton of awesome speakers. There are progressives. There are conservatives. There are feminists, anti-feminists. There are people across the spectrum. Count Dankula will be there. And, um... Who, Sargon will be there, and Lauren Chen and Melissa Chen. I don't. I, I'm. They're not related. And uh, Shu on head. So there's gonna be there's gonna be people uh, across political spectrum. We have progressives. We have Graham Elwood, Tara Devlin, progressives and feminists. It's gonna be great. Come to the event. There's gonna. There, uh, I believe the after party already sold out. So get your tickets now. But uh, let's see what Ted Cruz had to say. Senator Ted Cruz rocked the room at the Young America's Foundation. Nash, uh, F- Foundation National Conservative Student Conference last week, ripping universities and colleges for trying really hard to raise a generation of pansies. <laughs> Cruz's biting remarks were triggered by the first question after his speech when he conducted a Q&A. A student from uh, Binghamton University got the ball rolling, stated, Hi, Senator Cruz. It's a pleasure to meet you. I compete in parliamentary debates. However, in tournaments, well-intentioned but misguided policies about political correctness have been quashing freedom of speech and our free expression of ideas. It is incredibly frustrating, but it seems to be a microcosm of what's going on in our national dialogue. Do you have any prescription of how we can improve our level of discourse at the local and national level to restore the meaningful and important conversations that have been combining to make our democracy as great as it is? What a well-spoken and thought-out question, young man. Cruz replied, elaborate a little bit on how political correctness is impacting college debate. The student answered, I'd love to. So at the beginning of every round, for us to write our gender pronouns on the board, what? It gets a little bit worse. If our cases are a little bit edgy, we have to trigger warn before each round if we say anything. At this point, Cruz bent over and put his head in his hands, eliciting laughter. This is, this is the crazy thing to me. I think one of the big issues in today's politics is not necessarily left or right, I've heard people say authoritarian versus libertarian. It's nationalist versus globalist. Man, it is it is overly sensitive pansy versus like hardworking, calloused individual. It is hardened adults. It is maturity versus immaturity. Why is it that these democratic socialists aren't working class? They, they, they have liberal arts degrees. They're not lifting bricks and shoveling, you know, dirt and farming. And they're claiming they're representing the working class. No, you are a new pseudo bourgeoisie of uber wealthy Americans who have iPhones and live in urban districts for the most part. You are wealthy. You are rich. Let me tell you a story. I was in Brazil. Okay. I was in Brazil and I went to a favela. Favelas are like shanty towns and there's like narrow corridors. They're just houses built on houses. One of the houses I went to, they couldn't flush their toilet because they needed rainwater for water pressure. It hadn't rained. There's a drought. So unfortunately, they all just did their business on top of their family's business. And there was a huge pile and it was nightmarish. More than that, when you flushed, it was just a PVC pipe that shot into an open ditch. I kid you not. You, I, I did an interview with a Brazilian gang leader, and we were on a bridge above an exposed ditch with human waste just pouring all over the place. That's, that, that's being in a slum in, in Brazil. And I tell you this story. I highlight how bad it was because the mother said to me, wh- through a translator, why are the rich people protesting in America? And I, confused, said, well, no, uh, they're not. She was referring to Occupy Wall Street because it was several years ago. And I was like, no, no, it's, um, it's like the, 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 the poor younger people are complaining about wealth inequality. And, and then the translator says it, and she laughs and she goes, <laughs> no, Americans are all rich. And I started laughing. And I'm like, yup. To her, America is the ivory tower. These people, these DSA people are the global elite 
uber wealthy capital city crazies. You ever watch Hunger Games? How all of the people in the capital city dress like lunatics? This is what it reminds me of. They like eat food and then they drink Ipecac to vomit so they can keep eating. It's like, I think they should do that in Rome or something. Anyway, the point is, to these other parts of the world, most of the world, where people are poor, what do you think they're looking at? They're looking at a bunch of people complaining about whispering, overly sensitive, pathetic, weak, but wealthy and privileged, sitting atop the, the massive skyscraper ivory tower that is, you know, the, the epitome of wealth in the world, and then complaining that everybody's mean. Man, I, I strongly uh, uh, recommend these people never travel outside the country. Heaven forbid you go to another country where, like, you break your leg and fall down, and when, when someone walks by you, you ask for help, they take your backpack and leave. Heaven forbid you go to an area of the United States like Baltimore, where someone just doesn't care and says, no offense, you, you know, I'm going to now rob you. I grew up on the south side of Chicago. I was shot at once. Literally no reason. A car drove by, guy entered the window and fired at me and my brother in his car. And we were like, whoa, it just happens. It was random for no reason. And that is America. America has bad areas, but for the most part, we're all pretty wealthy. And these people are acting like they have it so bad. It's just, it's so weird. Let's, let's, let's wrap up. I, I, I keep these short, but I, you know, let's, uh, Cruz then provoked hilarity, shaking his head sadly and intoning. We're all going to die <laughs> after the laughter and applause subsided. He continued. One of the saddest things we're seeing is our colleges and universities are trying really hard to raise a generation of pansies. What is the sense that you have a right not to be offended? You have a right not to hear ideas that are scary? Look, the entire purpose of university is to hear ideas that are scary. This prompted another ovation. Crew said, I talked about being a happy warrior, not a daisy wearing daffodil priest. It really is not that frightening. When I went to college, when I went to law school, I was surrounded by leftists. I took classes from Marxists. And by the way, I don't find Marxism just sort of cute and chic. A guy down the hall from me sophomore year in college had a poster of Che Guevara. I remember going into his dorm and saying, hey, man, that's really cool. That's so awesome. Have you thought about maybe putting a Hitler next to it? Maybe Mao, Stalin? Listen, if you're going to celebrate evil, torturing, murdering sons of, of, of <laughs> bitches, really, Shea was an amateur. There are much worse guys to pick from. That brought the house down. Here's the problem. Let me tell you the problem of everything. I'm going to wrap it all up. I completely agree with Ted Cruz's assessment, and I am not a conservative. There used to be in this country, I mean, there are, they're just, I don't know where they're at, liberals who had, who had strength and courage and maturity. And now the left is being dominated by whiny babies who can't handle hearing dangerous ideas. Well, it's a, it's a damn shame. But you know what? Unless these people grow up, they're not going to win any fight anytime soon. Stick around. I got one more story coming up for you in a few moments, and I will see you then.